Hello and welcome back to another of the Lawful Remedies, a day earlier this week because it's Friday tomorrow. A good Friday, apparently. <laughs> um, I'm Richard Bobes and with me is Karen Dodd. And tonight we have a host of clever clogs for you. It's like celebrity squares. Where's Bob Monkhouse when you want him? Uh, <laughs> Sitting next to me. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> Thanks. And how are you, Karen? Yeah, I'm very well, very well. Looking forward to this evening because we've got lo loads of, of them on today, which is great. We've got, as you say, like a you know, blankety blank jobby or celebrity squares all sitting there on your screen. On my screen. On your screen, waiting for the questions. So we do need questions. As we were just saying, if you can put question on, if you're putting it in the comments so that we can go to that straight away. But we do have a couple already. Here we go. Look, here is um, mm. a, an example of some of them all on the screen there. <laughs> Uh, it is a bit like... Yeah, it is. Yeah. And then they all move around, don't they? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, I, if only I could do a Bob Monkhouse impression. I'm, I'm not sure very... you can. Of course you can. I can't of course remember. you can, Malcolm. <laughs> I can't remember what he sounds like. Well, I know. No, that's that's no. the thing. It was, it was I, happy, wasn't he? If happy it had been smiling. Opportunity Knocks, that would have been easier Oh, with Huey me. Green? Yeah. Yes. Why can you do and Huey I mean, Green? Well, not really. <laughs> and I mean that most sincerely, folks. <laughs> Opportunity knocks. No, you um, can't do no, that. That's, that's right, that's, Richard. Yeah, so that's yeah, that's back that. to uh, so tell us, uh, Karen. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen. By the way, if you want to write a question, uh, anything to do with the lawful remedy for the, your situation that you're in, remember this is. Uh, I've got the why I put that on your screen. No, I don't know why you do uh, either. This is uh, not legal <laughs> advice, as in legal advice in the way that uh, we might get sued. Um, for anything, this is purely entertainment and a bit of fun, but some of this stuff might be of use. A bit of wisdom, I think we could call it. Wisdom, we... wise words from so, wise men, yeah. Anyway, uh, if you want to put a question in, put the word question in hieroglyphics so that we can't read it, and then your question that follows, and um, let's introduce our marvellous panel. So tonight, Bob, we yes. have um, Thanks. Uh, the People's Lawyer. Are you going to go to them as we do it or not? Yes, no? yes. Okay. Oh, 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 sorry, because okay. as long as they oh, say they something. Got to, so, hello, people's lawyer, David Edelman. Hi there. There we are. That's it. Goodbye. Okay. <laughs> are you well? Uh, very well, thank you. Very invisible right now, but very well. Excellent. Very invisible. Oh, no, there we, I am. We, That's no, it. We there can is. see you. <laughs> we can it's see going you. to be a fun night tonight, oh, isn't no. it? It's chaos. It is, uh, yeah. um, <laughs> <laughs> we have Dean of Buxton. Hello, Dean. Hello, Dean. Yeah, hi, everybody. There he oh, is. Oh, there he is, speaking. Well done. In his car on the M1, hurtling south for the winter. You're not driving. No, no, no. no, no. <laughs> no, no. It doesn't oh, look like he's hurtling. It's the only place you can get a decent signal. <laughs> no, he's already it's hurtled. Yeah. Um, who else? We have allegedly Dave. Hello, Dave. Hello, everyone. And where are you, Dave? I am in Hong Kong at the moment, so it's about one o'clock in the morning here. Brilliant, brilliant. So, but you're on UK time. He's he on, UK yeah, time. So. on UK time. On UK time. Yeah. <laughs> We have uh, Chris Coverdale. Hello, Chris. Speak, Chris, or forever hold your peace. I think he's holding his... A screen. muted Chris. A muted Chris. Maybe we'll find right. him. I can't see him. Uh, sorry about there, that. Um, oh, sorry. Uh, yes, I'm fine. Thank you very much. I'm recovering uh, for after my uh, uh, problem with the uh, bailiffs, so that I'm nearly better now. Oh, it's good. To, it's good to know. Yeah, it's good to see you. I yeah. hope that you've uh, visited them and delivered a punch in the appropriate <laughs> place in, in uh, return. Well, uh, long term we may, but uh, excellent. I just need no, to focus it's on the peaceful. main. It's all peaceful. A legal, peaceful, Pe yeah, honourable. Peace, yeah, on, honourable. Yeah, yeah. A few, a few words. Yeah, and then Sook. Have we said hello to Sook? Not yet. yet? Hello, Sook. Good evening. How are you? All right, we're good. Fantastic. Good to see you there on your baseball cap. And um, <laughs> and, so, and your nice warm jacket. And Are your you... nice warm jacket. And you've come on last minute, Doctor, yeah, haven't you? Because I've only just sent the link. And we also have... Mm -hmm. So <laughs> um, later this evening or whenever, we've got a good story. We've got a success story from Jill, who's kindly... Um, we had to talk her into it to bring her on the show. Did we? But she, yeah, we did. So thank you, Jill, for coming on board at some stage. And you can tell us your success story from listening to advice from some of these wonderful clever clogs that we have on, on So board. hello to you, Jill. Hello. Thanks for inviting me. No, it's a pleasure it's a to pleasure. have you. It is. And, and Jill's just come back from the Far East as well. You've just been away, so you're a bit jet-lagged as well. The so. Thailand is wonderful. Thailand. Mm. Oh. So much more relaxed. <laughs> and sunnier. Yeah. Fantastic. And drier. <laughs> yes, drier, yeah. drier than England, <laughs> which but, um, yeah. we seem to have a lot of rain. Anyway, so there we are. That's our wonderful panel. And now all we need from you, our lovely viewer, is a series of... Um, 
mind-boggling, hard-taxing questions which will absolutely get mm. out the good lawful juices from these fine fellas and okay. ladies. A lady. A lady. Um, two ladies. Tonight. Two ladies. Well, but no, I'm not, we... I'm, I'm not the expert at all, am I? As people tell me on the comments, I'm not an expert. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just here trying to organise it through we the do... Freedom Network. So I just sit here next to Richard. So, we do um... have a few detractors who, uh, <laughs> yeah. isn't it amazing how it's people who really hate the show, they love to come on and hate the show. All and... through, throughout the whole show, I every know. week. It's like, I... you know, a whole day, isn't it? And just a of... special message for them. That's what the BBC was made for. Uh, so there we are. Anyway, um, Any, yes. have we got some questions from yes, last... Yes, we from did, we did. The, and I've lost it. Um, no, you, people had said... Did you find the oh, questions from yes, last yes, week? Yes, 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 I did. From last week. Okay, question from a viewer. Mm. Okay, so I was wondering whether you may have a cease and desist template letter to forward to the bank and or debt collectors against these so-called loans. This could be another series of interest to a lot of people. So, yes, a template. Well, we, we've, we've spoken of mm. templates, of course, but something that can help this gentleman in terms of a letter to the bank. What is, I wonder what the bank is doing then, for, that he needs a cease and desist. Yes, yeah, cease and desist. Who would um, like to take on dealing with the, uh, the lovely banks? Any hands well, up? Oh. Okay. Dave. Um, Dave. Allegedly Dave. So I don't do the cease and desist route um, with, with banks. Um, Usually I, I, I use a, a notice of conditional acceptance to highlight the fraud, essentially. And, um, you know, um, asking um, you know, three or four questions about, like, you know, where did the money come from, that sort of thing. Um, and, you know, asking for evidence that the money came from, you know, from them. And they supplied the money and, uh, you know, thing, things like that. Basically... Um, such that they can't answer these questions, and um, this is actually the very one of the very first things I did when I when I sort of woke up to the uh, you know the free man on the land movement. Um, so I, I had a nine thousand dollar I was in America at the time nine thousand dollar credit card bill. I sent that one letter asking those questions, even though that I was actually paid up in full. You know I wasn't um, in arrears or anything. Um, I sent that letter just asking for evidence, and next thing I knew, I had a debt collector after me. <laughs> um, oh, well, that's encouraging. That's... Mm. Yeah, mm. It basically means that uh, they've written off the debt, right? They've uh, sold it to somebody else, and and that's it. And that, it was gone after that. I got rid of the debt collector, collector letter, and uh, that was it. But um, I, you know, as far as I'm concerned, I wouldn't go the cease and desist route. It's uh, the notice of conditional acceptance exposing the fraud right oh that's very interesting mm. i mean as long mm. as you don't mind the debt collector coming along we like them don't we um well, well, well not. you don't have to go you don't you can get rid of the debt collector very easily even before they start coming around oh right okay i might need a, some assistance on that because i was uh, going to say can you elaborate on that because i know somebody's going to say yeah how what would do you, you mean how yeah. would you get do that Okay, well, the debt collector is pretending to be the holder of the debt. Right? They're pretending yes. that they're, they're not. Um, in order for that to happen, they need to have something called the deed of assignment. Okay, they need to have proof that they are acting as the agents for whoever you're supposedly have the debt with. And they don't have that because all they've done is they've paid, say your debt is for a £1,000, they've paid like a tenner for that. Uh, for the for the uh, you know privilege of being able to collect it from you, and they're hoping to bully you mm. into paying the whole thousand pounds plus whatever they, they want to add on top of it. So they've got no right to collect or do anything at all. But if you if you give them any uh, give them the right to do it, and it's easy for you to give them uh, authority, then they're going to start building a house of cards against you. And uh, that sometimes culminates in um, going to County Court or Northam was it Northampton uh, Bulk Centre mm. and you know, issuing CCJs and that. But you can literally stop it in its tracks by, by saying, look, I don't know who the hell you are. I don't know what this, uh, this supposed debt that you, um, you say that I owe you because <laughs> you don't owe them anything. They're just no. somebody just saying, oh, you owe me a thousand pounds. So, so yeah, you, you literally confront them. And most of this is, is 
you standing in honour, being an honourable person, and and confronting them and asking for proof of what they're saying, because they never have proof of what they claim. So no. that's it. And it's interesting because I mean, when they came for my van mm. and they said, "Well, we're going to take your take your van," then um, I, they and I said, "Well, where's your warrant? Where's your proof?" And they said, "We don't need any." And the three policemen are there and all that intimidation that's going on. But mm. I'll ask them next time for a deed of assignment. Well, they will say they will say things like that. Remember what I said last time about um, taking your clothes back to a shop without the receipt. Mm. Yes. Yeah, the, the bod on the desk will say, no, no, you can't do that. Right? And that's, but that's a lie. But nine out of ten people are going to accept the lie. If he could yeah. get past, if he can get past the first boss, right? yeah. just like a video yeah. game, get past the first boss right, and get to the final boss, uh, you'll find out that, uh, oh, yeah, you can. You can do that. So, yeah, it's a, it's a question of getting past right, the, uh, the, the liar at the uh, front desk. I think it's also believing in, in yourself, isn't it? Because you know you were right and believing in your truth. And this is where the, the sovereignty comes into it. So when you know that and you've got that confidence, then it's a lot easier to stand up to them and say, no, you know, I've, I've got the rights to do this. You're just performing They'll use your task. guilty mind. They'll use your guilty mind against you. Yeah. Right? Because we've been taught to be uh, feel that's, guilty. That's right. Right. Everything. Yeah. yeah. Schooling, the schooling system. Is that one done? Any other comments from anybody there? We've got another question. Yes, yes. Uh, yeah. David Edelman. I uh, totally agree with Dave, um, but I would drill down into why um, the cease and desist is an overrated remedy, um, certainly with banks, because th the problem with a cease and desist is that it encapsulates within it a claim. And we're trying to, as, David, as Dave um, quite rightly highlights, we're trying to avoid claims where we're trying to put the or well, we are putting the ball in their court to justify their claims. Not, so within a cease and desist, you're claiming that you're being harmed and you're putting them on notice to stop the harm and to, and to cease and to desist from doing it. But what harm is it that you're alleging? Um, who is it that you're, uh, you're claiming? You know, what is it they're claiming? What, how is it harming you? And, and um, on what basis is that harm causing you um, a problem, if you see what I mean, is I'm not expressing this very well, but basically there's a problem with cause and effect when you use a cease and desist. It's far more appropriate when there's a more identifiable harassment or nuisance or, um, or distress that's m much more manifest in the real world. If it's just happening on paper, cease and desist is more problematic. I don't know if I made much sense there, but I mm. think you mm. know, uh, so conditional acceptance is, is definitely far superior for things like that. Yeah, I mean, that makes sense if it's on paper, but if people are banging on your door going, yeah. give us the money yeah. or we'll blow your house up. That's, um... that, that's the thing, because they don't know. They, they, they're just following instructions, aren't they? And they think they're in their right to follow those instructions. So no matter what you say, they're going to carry on doing what they're going to do. Come what may. Come what may. Come so what may. can I interject for a moment, please? Yes, Jill. Can, can I just ask um, Dave and Dave what um, what your what an appropriate response would would have been from you when you had that intimidation with three police officers at, at the door together with a debt collector? What would you what would they advise that you actually were able to say to them? Were, would you have asked for the deed of assignment? Uh, can I just jump? Around. Can I just jump in ahead of Dave? I'm, and I'm only doing that because I've had direct experience of this. Mm. Um, it's actually there's a very simple remedy. It's Section 26, Criminal Justice and Courts Act 2015. Yeah, abusive position by constable. You ask them, are you here to keep the peace? If they say yes. In which case you just say, well, what, what, what evidence do you have that there has been or is about to be or likely to be a breach of the peace? Mm. I'm, I'm a man or woman in my own home. How can I breach the peace? So when I did that, they were gone in literally two microseconds. Mm. They can go down for 14 years for causing you loss and causing a gain to an agent who really should be arrested for breaching your peace. So there's, there's, the, there's the quick remedy. It features okay. on my personal protection card and I had to put it into action to prove that it works and it certainly does work. The police 
they just said, oh, um, we have no business here, it's clearly a civil matter. Thank you, bye. And as soon as they go, it's amazing how quickly the agents lose heart and skedaddle. They just, it's a pantomime, they're just using the police to, to put on a show for you and hope that it will cause you panic. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I was just going to... Yeah, I was going to say, yeah, that was the first thing I was going to say as well, that, uh, you know, stand down the police, right, because they're, they're, the, uh, they're supposedly the big stick to make you comply, right, but you can stand them down with the Criminal Justice and Courts Act 2015 and, and just they, they, have to, they have to stand by now. They can't do anything. Um, but the, uh, there's a thing um, in common law called uh, Castle Doctrine. I don't know if you've come across that. Um, Sounds good. Does sound good. Castle, doesn't it? castle doctrine is your right to de- defend your home and your property and yourself mm-hmm. using reasonable force up to and including deadly force. Right. So you know it comes out of um, an English man's home is his castle. Yeah. And um, and so anybody trying to breach your castle um, is is engaging in an act of war. Okay, and uh, you have the right to defend yourself. And now really, we'll see. Sorry. Sorry, no, I was, I was, sorry, I didn't mean to jump in, but I was just going to say that's really interesting because I've heard people being told upstairs to boil the kettles and be ready by the <laughs> windows to pull them down when they're breaking into the house. And the tar as well, and, yes. And using, mm. the, you know, because they said something about the castle something. It's mm. clearly the, exactly as you've described. Castle though. doctrine, yeah. yeah. So I, I was actually going to make a range of baseball bats with reasonable force written on them. <laughs> <laughs> Can I, I just say so, that so in well. the ordinary course of events, and, and I hasten to add and stress ordinary course of events, so... My assumption is that you're not a targeted individual and that you've not got some kind of criminal record that would make the police want to get their own back for whatever Mm. reason. In the ordinary course of events, you are Joe Average. There is no question. Nobody is going to even attempt or even pretend that they're trying to get into your home. It's just not happening. Mm. In the ordinary course of events, I hasten Mm. to add. Mm. It, it, we've seen so much footage, haven't we? That's the thing that I think where it goes wrong on social media when when these things go viral, you see the coppers coming to the door and and bashing in the the door and pulling people <clears> out. And I know it's a fear tactic, but that I think is what goes into a lot of the general public's sort of mindset, thinking, oh, I can't do that because the police are going to come around and arrest me and put me and, and whatever. And sometimes they do. I know we've got people on this panel that that has happened to, but that's enough to put the fear of God. In well, people. Karen, Karen, can I just understand. say that? Oh. Um, I was just going to say, you've got to understand that they're using psychology against you, right? Um, remember, guilty mind, right? So if you know, if you've got if you've got any sliver of guilty mind, they they are going to exploit that. They, they, you know, these these people are masters of psychology. Mm. So um, you know, they put TV programs on. You know, if you can't pay, they will take it away. You know. That's yeah. there to program people into yeah. believing these people can do all this stuff, right? Yeah. Um, so if you show any weakness whatsoever, uh, and one of the weak uh, shows of weakness is when, they, when people say, well, I'm vulnerable, or I've got a bad yeah. leg, or whatever, whatever it is, that, that's like a red rag to a ball to them because they know they can, they can um, you know, put enough pressure on you to make you fold, right? Yeah. So it's literally... Knowing a few bits of legislation like the Criminal Justice and Courts Act for the police and knowing that the, the, uh, the, the bailiffs, whoever they are, cannot come into your house. They cannot do, well, literally, they can't do anything, right? Yeah. If you stand up with no, with no fear in your heart, right, they have got no um, alternative but to get, get lost. Can they take your car? Well, if they clamp your car, tell them, right, um, Take your property off my property. I'm going to give you 10 minutes or I'm cutting the thing off. And then, you know, um, have an angle grinder ready or have somebody who knows who's got one. Right? Cut the thing off, put, uh, put your invoice for £800 for your clamp removal fee and tell them that they can claim back the damage to the clamp, you know, if, as long as they provide proof of purchase. But can they remove your car? That was a threat I got, that, that not so much clamping. So I'd wake up in the morning and my car would have disappeared. And then I'd have all that ag 
to go and get it back. And I think that's what puts a lot of people off as well. Can they do that or do they do that? No, they can't. Right, they, they, they will start, they, they, again, yeah, they have to go through steps. Right, first of all, they've got to put a notice on your car to say that they're moving it or something, or they'll clamp it to make sure it can't get anywhere. And then they will, they'll start threatening you with, uh, you know, bringing a lorry down. And sometimes, if, again, if they sense weakness, they will, they will get the lorry down there and, you know, the, they'll keep pushing you until they, they, they drag it away. It's, again, they're using our fear against us and our ignorance. And, uh, you know, you just need to to know a bit about what's going on and then stand up against them without fear. No, I, I mean, I, Can... I, I I totally agree. I would just say this, David, a people's lawyer, because also this would lead into what you're doing, people's lawyer, is the education, the way we have been indoctrinated through our system in the West. Well, you know, you, can... you're going into school, you're being told to stand up, put your hand up, if you want the toilet, sit there, do this, do that. And we're just used to that. And we're a very polite nation. Yes, please. No, no, you know, thank you. Sorry. Lining up in queues. We're so used to that. So it's a whole new mindset. And I think th the reason I wanted to gather you guys together to do this lawful remedy was to instill confidence in, in people that want to take action now. We've had so many people doing the talks and workshops and seminars and conferences, which is great coming on Richard's show. But now this is the time to actually take action and bring people together. And I think in your local communities, it's really important to have support. It's really important. So if this, this does happen, you know, you can phone your next door neighbour or, or Fred down the road, and then you've got that support. Sorry, David. Or the people well, I, I, I can only half agree with that, Karen, because ultimately we're being challenged to stand on our own two feet. I don't have three feet or four feet. I've only got two feet. So I had, I had a, a t an emergency, well, not an emergency text, but a panicked text from one of my best friends. And he said, oh, they're threatening to c come and, and visit me. This is one of the DCA's debt collection agents. So I went psychological on him. I said, um, right, do you think they're going to come with a gun? And he said, no. So I said, do you think they're going to come with a machete? And he said, no. Um, next question, do you think they're going to come with a knife? And he said, no. So I said, do you think they're going to come with a jemmy to wreck your door? Well, no, because it's no, absolutely not. So what's the problem? And he calmed down and he could see what I was getting at, that it's basically a psyop and that he needs to just calm down. The other thing I would add is that people need to know something called the golden question which I uh, developed from something that Mark Horn said to me one day, I don't know, I forget where he said it, but the golden question is when they arrive, if they do arrive, or you can send it to them in print before they even arrive, is what claim are you making to my property or my offspring, if, if it's boys or girls, on what lawful basis what, and with what evidence in support or what, with what living testimony in support? And they can't answer any of those questions. It would, it would compromise them. So that's the golden question, which is, um, which, uh, which fleshes out Dave's castle principle into, into um, an actual tangible remedy. The power of the question will help you stand on your castle power. Yeah. 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 Sook's little hand up there. Sook's got his hand up. Sook. You're on mute, Sook. Yeah. Sorry, I didn't have my hand up. Um, I was just. Uh, oh, you're just stretching. Just waving. Are you just stretching? He is indeed. I was saying oh, hello. <laughs> We've only got small, <laughs> tiny little windows to see the other panelists, <laughs> just in case that you wanted to say anything. Does anybody else want to say any more on that before we move on? Uh, if you do, just wave at the camera, and um, we'll we'll see. And I'm scanning across the top. Well, okay. the other thing that um, I could have said is that I could have asked him, "Do you think they're going to come with a warrant?" And the thing is that it's just a trivial debt so there's no warrants for trivial debts and and even if there is a warrant they have to as dave says they have to go through due process they have to give you formal notice that they're going to visit and if these are bona fide illegitimate court enforcement officers they ha they will be respectful and if you just say i'm not going to consent to anything you're going to ask me to do or sign so you're wasting your time they will say thank you very much and depart it's only the cowboy pseudo fake pantomime enforcement bullies that take a more belligerent attitude and you need a more uh, a, a more assertive approach with them so but with the bog standard court agent 
just be civil. They're civil and uh, they're not going to get anything out of you. Fantastic. There, there's, can we go to Marianne Fitzgerald says, what did the man say at court, the two sentences, as we never got the answer, please? Was that something one of you guys oh, had mentioned Dean. earlier? Yes, Dean. Hello, Dean. Yeah, hi. You uh, were on the show, if you remember, um, and we did it in two parts. And in first part, t you you came into court. You were, yes. were summoned to court, and you came in and you you you, you cited a, a very a nice piece of um, prose. And then you said at the end of that show that you had whittled it down to two words, two lines. And uh, obviously, the viewer hasn't seen that show because you did say it in there. Could you remind us what it was? Yeah, so the two lines are, I do not understand, followed by, I require a trial by jury. That and is it. If you can't memorise anything else, you just stay and hold those words in court, that's what you'll get. Perfect. Thank you very much. Perfect. There Thank we are. You. Nice well and done. Easy well remembered. That was easy. Well, yeah, excellent. We've got a question from Slim here. Good question. What rights do we have to protect our property from trespassers? Ah. Oh. What rights? Uh, yeah. yeah. What rights? Do well, you? I'll break it down into two sections. The first section is somebody could unknowingly, so meaning by accident, walk onto your property or land. Okay. So this would not be with intent. So the intent right. is not there. So that is initially what they would call a civil case. So if you was to approach them and say, excuse me, but you are uh, trespassing upon my land. Would you please vacate at the nearest exit? Now, the moment that they would say either no or they knew that they were trespassing, then that becomes criminal because of the intent. So what makes something go from criminal to, uh, 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 from, from civil to criminal is the intent behind it. And I will give you an example. If two young lads were playing football next to a car and one of them accidentally kicked the ball into the car window, that is a civil offence because there was no intent. If the same two boys walk past the car and one of them has got a brick and smashes the same window, that is criminal because of the intent. So with regards to the trespass, it's all about the intent. Are they there knowingly or unknowingly? Brilliant. And the, the question, what was the question again? It was, what can you do to stop them? Didn't yeah, you? yeah, yeah, yeah. So you, um, you're well, not really... Criminal, if it's criminal, you can, you can actually make an arrest or you can call for the police. Because mm. once it turns from civil to criminal, and I've just explained the, the way that it turns, the, the police will be able to assist you if you didn't wish to make your own arrest. If you put um, signage up that people walk past that mm. says private property, please keep out. Yes. Um, so and the reason that that is up is so that it uh, removes the doubt from going to civil to criminal. If there is no sign, somebody could mistakenly go onto the land. But yes. when there is many signs... They can't then use that as an excuse. Oh, I didn't know I was trespassing. What, you didn't see that 500-foot tall sign saying do not <laughs> of the grass? <laughs> that's, uh, that's some sign, isn't it? You need to go yeah. to Specsavers, eh? And, and you've only got a small lawn, but there's a 500-foot <laughs> sign. Oh. Yeah. yeah, brilliant. Somebody's asked De um, De people's lawyer, what, as a targeted individual, you refer to, unless you are a targeted individual. What does what, that mean? Yeah, what yeah. is a targeted individual? Well, uh, well there's someone who's, who's getting up the authority's nose, basically, for whatever uh, reason. I, there is a concrete example. Obviously, I can't name names, but... There was a woman in the freedom movement who used to um, wave her clipboard in front of the police when, they were, when we had freedom rallies and was a, ostensibly a peacekeeper warning the police of uh, various crimes that they were committing and, and that got up their nose. 
So what at some point someone did behind the scenes was troll the internet for any dubious comments she may have made in the past. They found something and just for that comment, she was put away for six months in a maximum security prison. Mm. So in other words, in other words, if you have made yourself vulnerable to attack by going on the attack yourself for no obvious reason, uh, in other words, in commercial law terms, you've gone into dishonor because there's no reason to attack anyone ever, ever. Uh, you only ever have reason to either maintain the peace or, or defend your territory or defend your bodily integrity. But going on the attack is never appropriate. Um, so uh, karma, which can be a bit of a bitch, will, will <laughs> find a way to remind you of, of your, the error of your ways and, and they will throw the book at you if they get the opportunity. So don't give them the opportunity. Um, so that's, that's targeted individual, basically. Someone who has, in effect, laid themselves open to uh, revenge Thanks. from the authorities. Thank you. Thank you. Can Thank I you, just David. Add to that, um, Karen, just very briefly, uh, I'm constantly targeted and I've already been closed down twice in this interview by GCHQ and others. So if it, go, if it freezes and I disappear, you know that uh, that is somebody else's action on me in this interview. And do you also think, Chris, the experience that you've recently got, gone through, which is horrendous, do you think that's because you were a targeted individual? Because you've been very active for many years, haven't you? Not just the last four years. You've really been on this path for a, a long yes, time. Yes, I mean, uh, yes. Um, particularly because of the three unlawful imprisonment sentences and other things which I complain about and uh, so on. So, yes, it does happen. And uh, I know it's been happening really since 2003, really. Mm. Mm. And I suppose the question might be, is it worth it if you're, you know, if you're being hassled because you've said a few things or done a few things and then you think, do you know what, I... Yeah. Is, is it, is it worth... Because you must be in a position now where there's no backing down for you, Chris. No, and I think uh, it's important I did think about this before my uh, sons left home. But uh, after I was a single person again, in a sense, uh, without responsibilities for them and others, I thought, well, it, it ha I have to do it. You know, once you know what's wrong and why it's wrong, you have to do something about it. Mm. And th th I mean, there's that whole business about when you're challenging. I think we may have mentioned it. Or I was just in conversation with somebody else. If you're trying to challenge something that you feel is unjust or immoral like for example the council tax but not specifically and you're married and mm. your partner doesn't want to do that that can put that person the partner in a difficult position if you've decided stringently mm. to stand there and and stand your ground when the other one may go yeah but if we lose the house it's the both of us that lose out not just you because, yeah, that's a valid point. May I just say, because um, Magni here says, yeah, my girlfriend let them in, the bailiffs, because she was embarrassed the neighbours would see the bailiffs. <laughs> so, you know, you... you... <laughs> but that's, yeah. that's a valid thing, isn't yeah. it, sadly? Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. Not everybody is really wanting to stand up and, and be counted because of what, what's going on. So... And you're also asking... Psychology. Yeah. yeah. But you're also asking other members of the household not to open... The, you know, if you say don't open the door to people... Yes. ..and they're expecting a parcel and they say, oh, well, I thought it was the postman. Yeah. And then it turns out it's, it's not the post you're expecting. Absolutely. And I think, I think Chris made a valid point. If you've got dependents, if you've got young children or, or elderly parents or something that you're caring for, that, uh, partly that takes your energy, but also, you know, there's vulnerable people that you want to protect... So the fact that you can be doing this 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 fight on your own, not on your own, but you know, without those dependents, yes. make makes it a little bit easier, as hard as it is. But again, when you know the truth, you either sit back and ignore it, which isn't kind of what we've been put on this planet to do. When you know the truth, you've got to stand up and and fight the fight. I yes. think. Uh, just a little point on that, right? They're they're coming for our houses. They're coming for all our property. Yeah, you will own nothing and be happy. You know, they're serious about it. OK, so human nature is that you want to, you know, keep what you've got yeah, and, and not rock the boat so that, uh, you know, they don't look at you. 
right? That's what they're hoping. So they're, they're, um, their method of attack isn't a straightforward, you know, frontal assault. It's by, it's, you know, death by a thousand cuts. They're, they're chipping away our ability to survive in this system, right? So that we get desperate and end up, um, you know, in debt and, yeah. uh, you know, put the compliant. It- where will they put us? And just oh, a random oh. question here. They're coming for our houses. Haven't right? you, you seen? Know, this. But where are they going to put us all? In those big prisons. Oh, just just look at just look at America right now. Right? There are tent cities popping up everywhere, <laughs> um, and and that's it. There's there's homeless through the roof. Tent cities popping up everywhere, um, and and you know lots of desperate people are you know trying their best to to hang on in their their homes even though they've got nothing. Mm. So, yeah, that's you're looking at the future right now over there. Uh, and, and, you know, it's because when, when we first heard that, you alone, nothing can be happy, and we all laughed. And I thought, well, how, how are they going to take what we've got? And it is through stealth. It is through taxes. It's through utilities. It's through council, you know, it's, and, and the, the bills are just horrendous. And it's like they are focusing on the middle class because, you know, working class have, have suffered, you know, since day one. Now they're going for the middle class. They will come for the, for the wealthy, but the wealthy think, oh, we're all right, mate. And they don't, they turn their head away. But is that, is, is that a good psychology time? again. Yeah, is it, it is, a it good is. time to talk about trust yes, then? Hence Does this lead is. into the trust conversation? Yes, can I be- just throw something in just because I think it needs, it needs to be said? Um, it's all very well that we know what we know and that we know that we're in a war, but if we are living with people who either don't know that we're living in a war or suspect that we are, but they're not drilled into how to fight that war, then it's the uh, principle of we're only as strong as our weakest link kicks in and I wish I had a pound for every time someone said when I said how did the bailiffs or whoever whatever you want to call them get in oh well my wife let them in or Mm. my daughter let them in or my Mm. cousin let them in Uh, well that is that is serious negligence on part on the part of the so-called warrior because a warrior will train up their comrades so that it becomes an effective team effort Mm. yeah Mm. No, that makes sense. As long as you're on the same page, because again, there's been a lot of divide and conquer through this, hasn't there? A lot of, you know, through that sort of the whole, the whole four year period that we've gone through, some people just don't want the fight or they don't understand it or they're very happy to go along and pay the bills and, and because they don't know, you know, what's happening. So it's, it's a difficult thing. I mean, things start, you fall out with your friends, you fall out with your family, you fall out with your neighbours, and that's how wars start. So you do have to get everybody on side. But if you have that difference of opinion, it's very challenging. And I was speaking to somebody the other day talking about you could have a difference of opinion, but that still isn't the answer. You've both got to agree to take this to the next level. We've got, somebody either has to acquiesce or not, I'm not talking about in what they're doing to us, but within this, this freedom movement, somebody has to kind of acquiesce and, and you have to come to this hand in hand. It's got to be in balance because if you have got that difference of opinion, then you've got conflict and that's when, you know, it gets bigger. But trust, right? Shall I, shall I ask this question that came from Ant? Uh, yeah, and just, uh, I'm yeah. um, just looking at a question here just in case it's relevant to where we are. A council man claimed a doc he showed at a meeting does not exist. I asked under FOI for a copy of the doc and was told it does not exist. How should I obtain a copy? Maybe it doesn't exist. Maybe it doesn't. Well, under freedom of information. What, yeah. What was the doc? Yeah. Does it say? Well, he doesn't no. say. It just says he, uh, he claimed a doc that he showed at a meeting does not exist. Can you tell us what the doc is and maybe... We can Help. find that out, yeah. yeah. Who, who so, that's from? Well, Indian, the relevant Indian legislation writer. would be uh, Data Protection Act 2018. I know that it was a FOI, not a GDPR data subject uh, access request, but um, concealing or blocking access to information. If it related to anyone's individual personal data, then you could bring it under uh, Data Protection Act 2018, Section 173, Subsection <laughs> 3, concealing uh, or blocking access to data. So, and that's a criminal offence. Wow. Very good. Um, just before you go to the other question, thanks for that, uh, David. Um, here's a question related to letting the bailiffs in and what have you, and I have to lift up because I can't quite see it properly. What if my landlady lets the bailiffs in while I'm on holiday? Oh. Well, well, she shouldn't. Not... Yeah, she, she shouldn't, right but she there's not the a right lot you can do. <laughs> not a lot you can do about it. Yeah. No. <laughs> if, if you're on well, holiday, I suppose it... that... 
yeah. It comes yeah. back to telling and not to let anybody that, that's in. That's right. And I get, suppose. Pe- get yeah. people on side. Uh, Explain. Uh, total up the loss and deduct it from the rent. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Perfect. Right. Should we do the trust? Yeah. So the trust. So we had a question last week that was sent to me, and it was it said it was mentioned that not doing this. This is from Ant Anthony. It was mentioned that not doing the census or not returning the voter card might remove you from the electoral roll. Well, apparently it won't. That was one point. So we can come to that. But it also it was mentioned using trust to protect your assets, and there was no advice on how to set a trust up. I know people who have paid a lot of money to set up, like hundreds of pounds here, to set up a trust, and it has taken years to do so. The question is that needs answers are, number one, how to remove property from the land registry, two, how to set up a trust, not through a solicitor, to protect your assets, three, is it possible to remove cars from the DVLA, or how to best protect cars from forfeiture by the authorities, and four, is there a way to remove yourself from the electoral roll? It would be good to establish local action and information groups, but getting people to meet up is very painful, we know that. So there's lots of questions there, and I think we should maybe ask Jill to come on board because she's done some of this right. with positivity, and then see what the panel want to say. Afterwards. Yeah. Okay. And we've, just, we've just been joined by Pete as well, haven't we? Pete yeah. the Hat. That's Pete the Hat. Hello, Pete the Hat. He's muted, so he's he can't say hello, there, but he's there. Um, I, can and... say, I can say hello. I can do that if you'd like. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So, uh, hi, Pete. Apologies yeah. for the late. <laughs> That's all right. We're in the end. So um, we'll go to, to Jill, Jill then. Yeah, to see her story. Yeah. Jill. Um, so did you want me to talk about the the tax, uh, the, 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 the deed of trust? Because I, I thought you were actually talking about, you know, setting up a trust to protect your assets. Yeah, I think I think we are here. I think we are. We are talking about that. Um, I well, I have really I have set up a private trust, but um, the little success story that you wanted me to talk about is related to Chris Coverdale's um, method of um, lawful tax resistance. So, would you like me to speak about yeah, let's that? Do the happy story. Should we do the happy story we do first? The happy story? And then we, yeah, and then okay. uh, we can go on to the panel. All right. Okay. So I well, I met Chris a couple of years ago. Um, he very kindly came to our house. We've been doing little workshops uh, every now and then, have a group of people. So w- I was really fascinated by by the way he was approaching it because I had approached council tax before, um, I still do. I haven't actually paid council tax since 2020. Um, but um, you know, the 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 method of of dealing with them is is basically DSAR and data subject access request. And an awful lot of questions and an awful lot of um, correspondence back and forth, back and forth. And when Chris came along, you know, um, educating us on the actual laws that exist um, with the Terrorism Act and the United Nations Act, and that we are actually as individuals um, breaking the law if we have the knowledge that we are partly at least funding genocide and war, then we have responsibility to to inform the tax office that we have now this knowledge and that we will put this money into a trust until they prove that that they are not contributing to, towards these um, war efforts anymore. So, so we all know that, you know, that, that spending our money on, on nefarious things and without anybody's vote or permission, they just, just keep sending huge amounts of money to, to Ukraine and, and so on and so forth. So um, for years, I'd actually, you know, been members, a member of, of diff- different um, organisations, you know, originally CND and then campaigned against the arms trade and different ones. And always there was another one that sort of said to, to take out a certain amount of tax um, and they, they were ending up in lots of trouble. Um, so this seemed like a, a really good approach so I had a go so la- last year uh, we're self-employed like myself and my husband we've always um, returned a, a tax return always paid our taxes and last year um, I decided that we weren't quite ready to just not do any of it so um, we employed an accountant to do the returns for us and my tax bill was just generated at just under a thousand pounds and so, you know, I can log into my own tax portal and right enough there it said 900 and something or other. So I decided to do the, the, the deed of trust, which is a very simple method, actually. It's really quite easy and all the information is on 
Chris's website. Um, but he talked us through it as well. So Phil filled out a very simple form with a covering letter, wrote to Jim Harra, who's the uh, CEO, I think, if they, well, I'm not sure if you call him the, the head of finance anyway, HMRC, and sent the letter off. Got a reply um, from a minion <laughs> and, um, and it said, uh, thank you for your complaint. And we've referred it to the first stage of the complaints department, etc. And so I asked Chris, what do I do? And we, we had a letter to write back to say, um, I'm not making a complaint. And I should really reiterate that I am following the law, the United Nations Act, the Terrorism Act. And, you know, I've already enclosed the copies of those before. Um, please, you know, understand that this is not a complaint and I'm withholding the money. It's in a trust. Uh, you are the primary beneficiary. I am the secondary beneficiary and the trustee. And if you can prove that none of my tax monies are going towards war, um, then uh, I will pay you pay you the money, I'm holding it in trust for you. If you can't prove it by the end of the next tax year, April the 5th, following year, then the money will go to the second beneficiary. So you, you've laid it all out, basically. If you can't prove that you're not funding these nefarious causes, then um, the money will return to me, basically. So I sent that. Um, so I said all that, and I got a second letter, which was more or less saying the same as the first letter. And I just left it alone for a while and didn't do anything about it. And then I logged into my tax portal just to have a look, and it was marked as paid. So I think it was it was marked yeah. as paid. Fantastic. Yeah. yeah, just marked as paid. Obviously, they didn't write and say, "Okay, then." <laughs> 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 we take on what you said. Yes. They just they just took it off. It's just taken off. And this year, I haven't returned wow. a tax. That's, haven't returned a tax. It's a closure, isn't it? Because I think a lot of a lot of us, a lot of people I know that have been doing this, they say, "Well, I haven't heard anything for eighteen months or two years or whatever." But you're still like looking about on your shoulder, thinking, "Are they going to come? Yeah. You know, what's going to happen?" But the fact that you've 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 had closure. And I think that's really, really important. That to me is a very happy story. And well done, Jill and, and Chris so, for all that. Be because you've made it quite clear that if they haven't done anything by the following tax year, then that's it. You know, you've given them the opportunity to cure, if you like. They haven't cured it. So that's mm. it. That's a, draw a line under it. Mm. Yeah. I think Brilliant so. stuff. Thank you so much for that. Yeah. Yes, um, thank you, Jill, for joining us on that. So I don't know if the panel have any any comments to say, especially because I, I know we we sort of just thrown the, the two together with the, the questions that Ant put in, but I just wanted the happy story thrown out. Because... Well, it must be encouraging for Chris <laughs> that uh, his hearing yeah. work. But who's that talking? Yeah, sorry, that was me. I was just going to say, if you could just read the, the question about the land registry again, please, Karen. Because uh, it's been okay, some time it's quite a long one. Okay, so <clears throat> it was mentioned. Da, 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 da. Also, it was mentioned using trust to protect your assets, and, and but there was no advice on how to set up a trust. I know people who have paid sixteen hundred thousand, sixteen hundred plus pounds to set up a trust, and it's taken years to do. Questions okay. that need. So, number one, how to remove property from the land registry. <clears throat> number two, how to set up a trust not through a solicitor to protect your assets. Number three, is it possible to remove cars from the DVLA or how to best protect cars from forfeiture by the authorities? Number four, is there a way to remove yourself from the electoral roll? Which yeah, one would so you like? Bear me on that. Yep. Uh, yeah, yeah got the land registry one. What, oh, oh, Dean's, Dean's just gone. suddenly... <laughs> <laughs> oh, there he is. No, uh, it's just that it, there must be a delay between my signal and your signal that's all um yes so um there, there is no form to de-register something and i have seen people that have said oh yes this form is to de-register and they say that they've got it from either dvla or the land registry well if you are going to give them more information that is not a way to um remove your information so the, the only way that I know of that you can, that would be the equivalent of deregistering either land or property or a car, is at the point of sale from one person to the next. And I use the word person correctly. So at, at the point of sale, the previous person that was registered as the so-called owner or keeper 
would inform the land registry or the DBLA that they are no longer the owner or the keeper. And then the second new owner, new keeper, so to speak, doesn't give them any information at all. If you involve the government in any way, shape or form, then you are consenting to their system. So but then could you not, um, sorry to interrupt there, but could you not sell your, say, your house to get it off the land registry to a fictitious version of you? If you were, say, an actor, you would have a stage name. So you could say, mm. instead of Richard Vobes, right. I'm going to be Richard Burton. Oh, OK, so the good choice. Uh, uh, yeah, I, I completely uh, understand what you are saying, right? But the problem yes. is going to come in, in where, how, if there is any altercation with that property, how are you then going to prove that either you or someone else owns it if you're using a fictitious Mickey Mouse name? How are you going to prove if somebody comes and robs it from you? Well, I suppose you, if you were using that name... And the government doesn't know it, but you, like in an actor or an entertainer, say I was, uh, people used to call me the Great Ricardo many years ago, and I could say I've sold my house to the Great Ricardo. Hey, it's the Ricardo. Hey, here he is. And then you can prove historically that you have been otherwise known as mm. the Great Ricardo. It's in my house, so you keep it off for my house. Sir. Okay, so with that in mind, is that you are going to use the process of witnesses, Yes. Yes, I suppose it would be. Mm. Okay, so your witness or witnesses would need to agree to such a thing, and that is fine. Right. But, of course, not everybody will be otherwise known as the Great Ricardo, no. which is a, a great loss to society. Oh, the, <laughs> do, do you see what I'm trying to get at? Is it, it, yes. The, there's I, two, two types of of worlds there's one way you involve the government and yes. there's another world where you don't involve the government at all and you were saying that well if i put it in this great ricardo name or whatever it was you're going to need something to back it up so don't just make a, a you know a real yes fitness thing have it so that you if the s-h-i-t hits the fan yes you have something that will back it up even if that's witnesses that's fine but have and what would you say so what would you suggest then if 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 you were to do it and you wanted to sell it to, or you wanted to get out of the system what would you suggest okay so uh, even in my very early talks in 2001 i didn't go beyond the basics of trust so what i mean by that is is the three roles of the trust and that was it because people need to understand the trust system itself if you do not understand it do not do it i don't like monkey see monkey do i like monkey to be able to understand what the monkey is doing so that means you need to know it before you do it mm. but the, 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 the question i'm asking you is what would you do if you had a if if you were the questioner and wanted to get your property how do you set one up so she needs to know whoever that is asking the question needs yeah. to know how to do it and then therefore that question will not be needed to be asked but she might want to know how you do it and th yeah, this but, book, yeah, this but book let's I say meant... if I have a private trust if i've got a private trust i am not going to tell her about <coughs> it because it is private right Go on, Karen. The, the, well, there's a book that I mentioned the other day that I'm I'm part way that through. Camera. That I, I don't know if you can see it because the light. Oh, hang on, this camera. This oh, camera. Oh, it's all going to collapse. Um, that one. Yeah, no? that one. That one. I mean, it's out of focus. It you is out of focus. Oh, that's all right. I can. Um, uh... It's hard. It's hard to get hold of now. Oh, there you go. Understanding trust and equity, by Alice or somebody. Um, it's it's brilliant, and it's written for lawyers. And I know a friend of mine was saying, well, we're lawyers now because we're we're studying law. You guys are lawyers. You know, if you're studying it, that that's fine. But I think reading this, it's actually called, yeah, Understanding Equity and Trust. This is the seventh edition by Alistair Hudson. And it's very, very thorough. And it talks about the settler, the beneficiary, the trustees. 
And, you know, I've got to really try to get my head around this because, <laughs> oh, sorry, am I done now? <laughs> down because you have to understand it there is a way and that's when i think oh mr schwartz said you will own nothing and be happy but that's not deregistering is it that's that's putting things into a trust from your your straw person into your living person i did explain just before we got went on to the trust that there's no way to deregister it yeah there's no form that you can fill out even if they get a form I've seen one of these forms and it says D E hyphen register. Well, that's not even English for a start. So it's not the form to fill out to deregister something. So there is no form to deregister something. And you can't there send is... in Sorry, sorry Dean, you, you can't say you can't send them a notice or something to say I hereby no longer consent to uh, my property being on your register, so please remove it immediately. No, because what do you think they're gonna do with that? Well, I've no idea. That's why I was asking you the question. <laughs> Since you're the clever one, well, yes. come here asking me. I don't know nothing. You're getting negative Honestly, comments there, Ricardo. Mm. Yeah, no, I, just, I don't. I don't agree with that actually, because when I when I did the car in twenty one, I removed it from the DVLA. Oh. So I sent them the notice and I removed it. As a living man, it was my property. The chassis number now belongs to me. No longer belongs to you, and that was accepted. The only the only thing actually in the end that wasn't accepted was the fact that they couldn't accept my insurance because it was a, a mode of self-insurance that they just couldn't get their heads around. But otherwise, you can remove the property from the government. There's no, there's no problem with removing it. I agree there's no form that they're going to give you, because they're never going to consent to you taking the stuff from them. Right. But you can do it, and then that's not sovereign. Asking them for it back isn't a sovereign thing to do. If you're going to be sovereign, you tell them, it's my property, and that's it. And you know, I've registered it in error or whatever the situation was. Your situation is now completely different. In law, it's a mistake of fact. You can tell them to transfer and, and uh, convert your estate back into yours that they've taken. And you can also remove certain assets. Same with the, same with the um, aspects of the land registry stuff. There's a limited company process that we've been through before. And it's on the Sovereign Trust, um, the SovereignTrust.net um, website. There's, there's a process there and people can set up their own trust for free on there. There's a template and people can go and have a look at that. Uh, and the book that um, mm. that Karen just went through and a number of other books and resources are on there from trust. What we've got to remember from trust is going back in the first trust that's set up is the one between the creator, your soul, and your body. Right? The mm. creator is the grantor. Your soul manages the material resources on behalf of, of, of your body as the beneficiary, which benefits from the material resources. Your soul can't consume material resources Therefore, it can only be the trustee and not the beneficiary. It's quite simple, that initial trust at the highest level. And everything else is just a set of triangle trusts hanging off that right the way down to all these other trusts that we talk about. So DVLA, this, that, and the other, these people have put themselves in between you and the creator as an authority. Yes. So there are different ways of doing it. You can mm. dance the dance like Dean saying within the legal system, or you can be sovereign and say, I'm not going to agree with this at all. I can remove whatever a property and assets I want. But um, I don't agree that you can't remove it, because what will they say? Well, they don't, they don't need to say anything. So just like when the inspector asked me, and I said to him, I've removed it from DVLA, and he said, well, did they agree it? And I said to him, well, I wasn't asking for their approval, sir. I was letting them, <laughs> out, of, I was letting them know out of honour and consideration. I'm not asking right. for their approval, because they have no authority over me. At which point he smiled and he walked away, because he knew I was right. So you can do it, but you've got to understand that that's your mm. truth and that's the way that you want to deal with it. <clears throat> so while and, what, what Dean's saying is right in terms of his, his thing. The only bit I don't agree with is that you can't remove it because there are methods for removing it. And would, I mean, would it be the case, like so many of these things, that we, we've never consented as such or as we've consented without bringing both minds to the, you know, like in an agreement, you both mm. have got to be mm. Um, mm. open about it. Yeah, but, we haven't shaken hands, have we? Yeah, <clears> to some <throat> degree, I mean... But to something, the equal thing is that people don't know what the rights are. So because they don't know any different, you can argue all they've done is care for you in a situation where you had no idea what you were supposed to be doing. Yes. But the point at which you found out, you have to remedy that. Right, exactly. You know, and, so, and that's the bit that we're talking about here. So from a trust perspective, there are there are ways, there are different ways. But you, you pay somebody else to do it for you. And then when you get hauled into court, if you can't answer what the trust is, then it's not a trust. 
the yes. point of the trust is it's a trust between those individuals, or those three parties, or however many parties you set it up with, how many roles you got. That's up to you. And if you haven't understood it inherently, then it's not your trust. Yeah, I would also argue if if, if you uh, if you have a private trust and someone asks you to declare why what your trust is, you you can say to them, it's none of your business, mate. It's private. Well, That's the point. I don't have to justify anything. The problem, of course, is that you come up against police, etc., and they may not accept that as an answer. So what we do with notice, that's where my, my expertise lies, if you like. I agree with Sook. I would just give notice. right? I've claimed it, and I would change the jurisdiction as well. I would say it's in England now, because then they have no lawful right to address anything against you anyway. They're, they're out, you're out of their jurisdiction. So end of story. And, and, and is it a, a valid point? I think we talked about this last week. So if you are setting up a trust and, and OK, it might just be, be between you and your benefactor or the settler or the trustees or you and God even. But is it worthwhile sending that document? Because I know it doesn't even have to be documented. It's just a verbal agreement. But obviously in today's society, that won't last five minutes. But is it worth sending that document off to various institutions? No, because it's a private no. trust. I'm not telling anybody. I don't have to declare it. It's private. It's none of your business. That's the whole point. That's why it's private. Right, right. Okay. So if I get stopped by the police and my car's in a private trust and they try and say something, I say, no, the car's in trust. It's a private trust. Oh, could you tell me? No, I can't tell you that. It's a private trust. Right. And that's been, and then it would have been removed from the DVLA. That this, this is the, the dilemma, isn't it? Because that would, guy, would they, that, yeah, yeah, yeah the copper's not going to say. The copper's saying, well, as far as I can say, madam, it's still in the, you know, it's registered here to to Mrs. Dodd or well, something or Mrs. Smith or. Yeah, well, that's the name, right? So that's how they, they try and convert, they, unlawfully yeah. convert you and use your name against you, right? But you don't yes, give them your name because you go, it's in a private trust. I'm not obliged to give you any information. It's in a trust. Yeah. Let's uh, let Dean come back uh, yeah. on, on that, Dean. If we just interject, there's, there's two points on the actual V5 form. So there's one where the, the previous owner fills out and sends away. Isn't yeah. that correct? Yes. Yes. And then there's a second slip where the new owner is supposed to fill out their details and then send that off. Yes? Yes. Yep. Right. So if the previous owner sends off his piece of paper stating he is no longer the registered keeper, but the new owner doesn't, that's how you deregister it. Because I have had a copper come up to me and say, this car is showing as having no registered keeper. And I went, thank you very much. And her face dropped. Say that again. <laughs> just, just just, for clarity, because I could see a few drawers, oh, drawers right. dropping. Right. Jaws even. Jaws, jaws. Jaws might be did, did, dropping did, did, as well. Did, but... did, did, did. So how I know that you can deregister something by doing nothing except mm. buying it from one person to the next and that person then writes to the dvla stating they're no longer the registered keeper that will then clock their name off scrub it out and it will show a blank as to who is the registered keeper nobody will be what right well how about that uh sorry it's yeah, dave yeah i think um uh, there might be a change here because um, I recently uh, went through this process, and the uh, the new the new keeper doesn't get involved. Um, the the last keeper fills in the slip, and that's it. You just get the V five. You don't you don't um, you know you don't as an, the, the new keeper you don't um, you know supply them with any information. It, it's a previous owner that does. Correct. Yes. So therefore, the previous so you, owner, you oh, yeah, the yeah, previous owner is going to say, "You are. I am the new owner." But I, me, as a new owner, I I could then fill in that form, could I not? No, you don't so, fill in the form now. You That's the know. thing. How do they know you've got the car then? Because, because the, the previous, previous owner, owner previous keeper, you. fills it in and then sends it off, and you just get the V five. But so, you haven't agreed, as a new owner, you haven't agreed anything because it's been done. You haven't agreed oh, anything. Yeah. You're automatically. Right. But the previous owner then has to get your information and has to get it oh. correct. Because no, otherwise, no, no, how no. Do... 
No, no, no. no, no. Huh? Yeah, no. Oh. Damn it, it doesn't. <laughs> oh, go, so, go on, Dean. So when you, when you change the V5 form with the old owner and the new owner, so these two people are stood next to each other, the yes. old owner and the new owner are stood facing each other. Yes. The old owner has got the V5 form, right? Yes. And the old owner asks you these questions. Can I please have your name, address, so I can put it on this form that I have got to send off to the DVLA? Yes. Will reply, no, thank you very much. Oh, I see. So then okay. he can't write. But. That's, but. but oh, hello. But, <laughs> Not over yet. Wait. <laughs> he, the, the, the one who was the old owner, he writes to the DVLA and says, I am no longer the registered keeper owner. It's gone to somebody else. And then right. you don't fill out any forms, the new keeper. You no. don't give them any information. No, I get that. Because the other one's done it. The other the, one's, yeah, yeah, done it. Well, so the other not... one doesn't know. You just <laughs> said to him, I'm not telling you anything. Tough titty, I'm off. Or, yeah. or you could make it, you could put anything there, couldn't you? You could put Mickey Mouse from Walt Disneyland or something. You could put well, you, anything you, yeah, but to I the think, old owner. But I think what Dean is saying is if you don't give them the information, you're just <laughs> saying, oh, here's the cash. Thanks very much for the couple. Can I have your info to send off this thing? No, thanks. I'll take yeah. my car yes. and you go. As long as you've got the slip, presumably. Yeah, the receipt to... from the previous owner. Yeah, the right. receipt. Yeah. So then okay. what happens when you come to sell the car? Because um, then you haven't got a V5, have you? No, no. But if, if you get into any difficulty, you've got the receipt from the previous owner. So he could be called as a witness that you yes. hand over some money for that car, right? Yeah. If you did a speeding fine, though, would it go to the previous owner? No, because he has written saying he's no longer the registered keeper. Oh, right, yeah, no, of course, So he's, yeah. he's cleared his so name. So he's cleared his yes. name, and the car is mysteriously driving somewhere until yes. somebody pulls it over, and, and then, and then the, and it's up to the policeman to try and extract that information. Uh, but if you just stay stum and say, it's a nice day here, isn't it? I don't right. know who you are. The, the, right. What can so they that do? Leads back, that leads me back to what you said. Oh, could you please state that again? So yes. time before last, the last time that I got arrested, I was in the car park... And a, well, I was on the side of the road, and, and a policeman came to my window and said, this vehicle is showing as having no registered keeper. I went, thank you very much. And his face Which proved dropped. it. Yes. Can and I, um, went. can I butt in? Of yeah, course. Of course. There's, away. There's, a, there's an urban myth that we need to dispel as soon as possible that we are obliged to register things and to fill out forms. There is never any such obligation, ever. So, for example, if you move from one council borough to another, there's no obligation, there's no obligation to tell the council. There's even a court case on this, for crying out loud. <laughs> there's no obligation to say, excuse me, um, Mr. and Mrs. Council, but I'm now living in your area. And, uh, and I'm, I'm, a, I'm kind of a bit of a financial self-harmer, so could you send me a council tax bill, please? <laughs> it, it's, we've been dragged up to self-harm and to confess. There's no obligation to fill out a tax return. There's no obligation to tell a council you've moved into their borough. There's no obligation to register kids at a school. There's no obligation to do anything ever unless you take an executive decision, weigh up the pros and cons, and decide that the pros outweigh the cons. And that's called self-governance and self-responsibility. But whatever you do, it must be having weighed up the pros and cons and never as a result of a knee-jerk reaction thing. Oh, if I don't do it, I'm going to get into trouble. Right. Because that's, mm. that's fear porn, it's Plato's cave, and it's residual post-traumatic stress disorder from your schooling. So um, the best thing then for those people who do not want to pay the council tax is move and just don't <laughs> tell them when you move to the new place because you'll never get one. It's the simplest remedy. There are others. You could get someone who's cohabiting to advise the council that the, you're no longer resident or you could even do it. You, you could give your, them notice of intention to cease residency on a specific date. And this court case says that, in effect, you're allowed to change your mind. You never actually moved out, but they'll just presume that you did. 
I somebody said to me that, that I'm, I'm quite whether this is on the same thing or not. But somebody <coughs> said to me um, that they had uh, bailiff problems or enforcement problems with their house, and they were going to come after the house. So he put it on the market, and because it was on the market, they couldn't do anything with it. Ooh. And he left it on the market. Um, for a long because, time, yeah. For it, because he did. There's no obligation to sell it no. to the first person or the second or the seven hundred and fifty third thousandth person who's looked at it. <laughs> um, it just was still on the market, and I don't know if that's a ruse or whether that's honourable yeah, or yeah. what. But uh, he's and it was a lovely timber framed, old fashioned Tudor place. And he said that's, uh, you know, they they're after it, but all the time it's on the market, they can't do anything apparently. Yeah. Anybody from the panel know? What do you think of that one? <laughs> they're all smiling, they're smiling. Yeah, and they're just thinking Chris, great another Chris way Chris is chuckling yeah, another way. No, just one other thing I wanted to suggest in relation to transferring money from someone from one person to another and this is really why we uh, get involved in trusts uh, that you don't even need to do that um, there is no betting tax in this country at the moment and so you can have a game or a, a bet with uh, whoever you want to receive your property uh, and um, lose the bet, you know, toss of a coin or whatever it is, hopefully witnessed and transfer the money. And then oh, the problem, uh, you know, the, uh, the materials or the um, property of one sort or another. So, um, and then I can rent it back. So I've done that with a lot of the stuff you can see behind me and uh, my books and everything else. And, um, I just rent it back from the people who won the bet. So you, you've gambled away your assets, basically. Yeah, so I don't have yeah. any assets for anybody to take. Yeah. They don't belong to me. No. I just rent them back. <laughs> well, I like that. Here's a, a question from Stuart O'Neill in the uh, audience. Sorry, I, I hope we haven't uh, uh, mm. forgotten about you. Um, and he says, "What if you have to visit? Uh, what if you have to visit the council for housing benefit?" And actually, on that note, a lot of these things, I would assume, is that you're either solvent or you have a job. But if you're on, say, universal credit or any kind of dole thing or you've got any kind of stuff and you go against the government in some way, they can presumably stop all of that. Uh, any of our panel want to comment on any of that? Um, no, they can't. They can't actually... Uh, um you know, garnish from your benefits. Um, I can't remember offhand the legislation for that, but there is a there is some. And you know, I'll, when I finish talking, I'll go and search it. And I'll, I'll I'll send it to you. Yeah, yeah I think it maybe comes under the Attachment of Earnings Act, Dave. I think. Uh, no, there's something else. There's something very specific. I mean, I'll give me a second. Right. I'll, I'll be back with you. Okay. Fantastic. <laughs> Stanley Milgram was was chatting to C. Gray on on the on the chat here, and he says that you need, I don't know how true it is, you need to take a birth certificate to a solicitor, and he will write you a document saying that you no no longer use a birth name, and new name, legit first hand experience. Does that make sense? You will. No. Yeah. No. Well, it doesn't make sense, or you can't do that. You no, take it, it just sounds like madness. Madness, okay. Even he says first hand experience, legit madness. Oh, the birth certificate has got nothing to do with you. It's, 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 uh, any dealings with that are going to be, um, a, you know, fr fraudulent, mistaken, uh, uh, false identity, um, conversion. You just huh? leave the birth certificate alone. It's not yours. Yeah, Good. it's fraud. Great. Well, it's great that these chats are coming now and we can just, you know, you've got the answers straight away, I was away, getting ready it? to do Our oh, House yeah. on the Corner of the our Street because of madness, of but oh, yeah. um, I lost the, I lost the <laughs> moment lost the there. OK, uh, um, Dave. very quickly, um, it's the Social Security Administration Act 1992. Um, uh, section, I believe, Section 187. Um, says no monies can be taken from benefits. Brilliant. Dave, you could go. you put that as a link in the in the chat box, yeah. please? They do, though. They do uh, take it. Yeah, OK. All right. Jill, Jill yeah, says if, that they do. One, once again, once again, if if you don't know that they right. can't, then they'll, they'll exploit that. Yeah. You're dealing with criminals. You're dealing with criminals. If they think they can get away with it, they will. Yeah. Uh, if you don't know, then they, they'll, they'll roll over you. But if you know it, you know, they're stuck, especially yeah. once you've told them. Yeah, yeah, no, that's, that's, yeah. 
That is the point. And I suppose that's the thing, isn't it? We're all, you know, even though we know they're criminals and they're dressed up in their suits and they're ever so polite and they're yeah. nice with their letters yeah. and then we fall under their, Spell. their uh, apparent authority, mm. even though they are probably cunning, lying bastards. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, uh, maybe. Well, and I mean, a lot of know. solicitors, you know, are inside, aren't they? There's a lot of corrupt solicitors that are, are doing what? time inside Her Majesty's Council holiday buildings. holiday house. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay, uh, okay. Any more questions from the audience? Let's have a look and see. If, yeah. Uh, if, um, yeah. Well, whilst you're looking for questions, can I just say that um, Sook referred to a website. We've got somebody from the website coming on um, shortly. And the website is the sovereigntrust.net. And there's lots of documents. That's where I actually got that book that I referred to earlier about tr trust and equity. So we've got somebody coming on, I think, either next week or the following week. But the website is thesovereigntrust.net. And it's, I think it's well worth having a look. And it's, it's, it's um, been created by um, anonymous people, volunteers to get that information and also to support you guys you know that are watching Richard's channel here we have we've mentioned before we're doing road shows so we're trying to get these together we've got four lined up now so I'll give you the dates if I may and that the plan is to get like three four five of, of these clever clogs to the road shows and a panel so that you can ask ask questions and there will be a fee obviously because it, it costs money to do these things you know to hire the hall and and for um expenses for the guys to turn up but the dates we've got is the 26th of may in glastonbury and then um in east sussex we've got the 9th of june on the 23rd of june we've got buxton which is where dean hangs out and then the 13th of july we have a north northwest london swiss cottage so 26th of may glastonbury 9th of june east sussex at hope 23rd of june buxton 13th of July, Swiss Cottage. And we'll keep these rolling. You know, if, if, if you can gather a bunch of people together, then I'm sure the panel, various members of the panel will happily, you know, come along and, and help you with your various issues. So, Richard, any, did you find a question? There's yes, one. I, I, I did find the first question that I find was, is the book that you were referring to, is, oh. that a, is it a page turner? It's a page turner, yes, as in, as in like a physical book. No, no, is it a oh, gripping? Oh, wanna, is well, it, it, it is, it is. It's a page, like, oh, I can't wait to, it's, you have to think. You have to think. And, and I love books, but I get to a certain stage and I've, I've thought enough, so I've paused it. But uh, it's one book that I will complete because you, you, I need to. I think when you're doing this, when you're standing up in sovereignty and you want to take on these uh, these criminals, you have to know what you're talking about, which is what all these guys have done. Hello, Richard. Hello, <laughs> sorry. I'm just trying to read, <laughs> read the questions. what people don't appreciate. I've got three cameras in the <laughs> studio here and um, over there behind the cameras are all the questions. And sometimes well, I'm, here's one. I'm actually having to go like this to find it. I don't have a little laptop with the questions. There's, there's one from Stuart, yes. and they're all coming in now. So if they did take the money out of my account, could I claim it back from the bank? Anybody? Hands up. Who's, who's going to go up. for that? Can you, claim, can you claim your money back from the bank? Because they have tried to do that, haven't they, before? Uh, if, it's, uh, if, it's, if it's direct debit, you can um, do a direct debit clawback, but you, it's always best if you can establish that uh, an error has been made. Yeah, so, you know, I, I usually do a, uh, a conditional acceptance process to establish that an error has been made because if they fail to, to provide you with the evidence, then um, they've agreed to, with you that uh, there's been an error. And once you've got an error established, uh, uh, you can actually go to the bank and, and request all, all the money you've paid back. Um, so, so, yeah. I think you had somebody on your channel that talked about that, Richard, a while ago. I think I watched that video. Yes, yeah. um, a chap, I think his name was Tony, if I remember rightly, yeah. and he was saying that um, you could request it and say to the bank that it was illegally taken or or some, some reason like that. And, you just have um, to say it's an error. It's an error, that's right, it was an error. But then he, it was the council tax in his case, and yeah. the council then just said, that's fine, but you still now owe us the debt. And so whatever it was, so he claimed he'd got, you know, £72 million pounds back, whatever whatever the figure was, yeah. it was probably a little bit less. <laughs> and and then the council said, um, well, now you've got that money back, you still owe us the £72 million, pounds, plus this right. year's well, 8000 that's, that's, that's why I, I say you go through a uh, conditional acceptance process to establish that, uh, you know, the there are, you know the council tax isn't isn't payable, or um, like Chris Chris's uh, approach, which I, I use for council tax, 
that uh, you know to to pay council tax is illegal you know for, uh, on my part you know right uh, so then you know for them to come back and say well no you owe us this money now well now they've got to prove that you're wrong yes yes here's one so do any of the guests of the panel know anything about re conveying and correcting the state your status Correcting your status. Yes, correcting yes, your status. Yes, absolutely. I'm involved with something called English Counties Assembly. I'm a joint England coordinator. We're rolling it out slowly because we've got to get it right. Um, the Americans are ahead of, you, of us, two or three years ahead of us. They've had about six or 7,000 reconvey onto land and soil jurisdiction. We probably haven't even had six or 700 yet. You know, it's early days here, but we are rolling it out. We're bringing in lawful land and soil jury assemblies, lawful county assemblies. We're going to bring back ancient jurisdiction, English common law jurisdiction, but we have to do it very, very carefully and painstakingly because it, one slip up and we're toast. So, um, so what, what, I'm just, I have a course in which I have modules one to six, and I'm telling my students, just wait, watch out for module seven because that will be um, land and soil jurisdiction. So the answer, that's a long-winded way of saying, yes, uh, we are reconveying. That's great. Um, but at the moment, it's just one, one by one, but it'll soon be hundreds, maybe thousands, and maybe even millions, but not yet. Uh, Dean's just, just, got his, yeah, Dean. Uh, yeah. David, just to ask you a question, um, are you aware that the English common law is not the same as the Anglo-Saxon common law, meaning trial by jury? Well, the, the, um, well we, we are opting for English common law. It will be trial by jury. The English common law is not trial by jury. That's the Anglo-Saxon part of our heritage. Okay, but we we might be we might be slip, splitting hairs. I will. I'm in various um, info groups. I'll put this to the group for comment. Yeah. Um, but thanks for the thanks for the heads up. Uh, there's a lot. We always get these little heads up, uh, and it's yeah. good. We welcome them because, mm. like I said, we don't want to slip up at, at a crucial moment. Um, so, yeah, thank you. Uh, it might help if you can um, source that information. Get. Show me where you've... Is this from um, the you Democracy are, Defined? Is that, is that where you've got no, that? No, no. So the, the law books will only tell you so much. You've then got to go and start reading the history books and find out where the actual trials came from. It, it will not tell you in the law books that it was the Anglo-Saxon parts. So it's where you get your trial by fire, trial by water, trial by yeah. ordeal. It's the trial... By it is part of the Anglo-Saxon part of our history, not the English common law that is written, that is the written stuff, um, case law, precedent, that is not the same as Anglo-Saxon trial by jury. So what, okay, very, I don't want to hog the, um, the airwaves here, but uh, what we could do is, is say English common law as inherited from ancient anglo-saxon law do you think that would cure that defect yeah i like it right okay i'll work with that thanks very much dean no worries we're here to help ladies and gentlemen we're here to <laughs> even even amongst the uh, the clever clogs themselves it's good we're to learning, see aren't we? absolutely mm. um jillian's got a hand up what would um, you like to say Jillian? just just a quick question um for david when you were talking about land and soil jurisdiction is that to do with the alloidal title, alloidal title? Um, not as not as such. It's just it's getting back into a three D, four D, five D reality and away from two D, which is paperwork and mm. presumption. So it's getting away from presumption and paperwork and moving into a reality of fact, truth, honour. Conscience. I wouldn't get hung hung up on terminologies. It's just, it's just moving from fake to fiction. Uh, no, 
Fiction. 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 There we go. <laughs> <laughs> from fiction uh, to fact, to from fake, fake okay. to real. Dave, um, okay, Alicia, thanks. Dave, has uh, got his hand up there. Yeah, Dave. Yeah, um, with, with respect to, to David, um, uh, I've, I've seen this idea of stasis correction um, well, from, the, from the beginning of the free man movement. I've seen it come and go and come and go. Uh, I've never really seen um, anybody have um, affect the system in any way. The system doesn't change its re res response to you if you've done all this paperwork and uh, and so-called corrected your status. I've not what seen is it. it. What does no, it no, I need, I need to rebut that urgently. Yeah. This sure. is not an individual process. This is a collective process, which we do one by one, but there'll be no point. I mean, I can half agree with you. If only one man does it, that man is wasting his time. It's a numbers game. So we're hoping that once the numbers are sufficient, then we have the jurisdiction corrected as a collective. This is not... What you're referring to was attempts by individual men and women to correct their status and finding that they were a desert island in, in shark-infested waters. No, no, well, no, no. What I'm, yeah, what so I'm referring to, what I'm referring, sorry, um, just for, what I'm referring to is that over the years, there have been lots of, uh, uh, yes, lots of separate attempts, but there's been a lot of people selling processes and selling you know we can correct your status for you and stuff like that and i've never seen any any actual no, uh, no um, again let me rebut that nobody's selling anything in fact when you sign up for oh, this no. correction oh, right, you actually you actually get um prosperity payments um from because a trust has been accessed a trust has been accessed and this is bottoms up grassroots empowerment. There are no leaders, there are no financiers, no one's making a profit off anyone. We're simply, we're simply going back into reality, into the old reality of men, women, boys and girls, and away okay, from okay. the corporate matrix just, system. It's quite gonna, straightforward, gonna, actually. We'll, we'll go to Suk in a, in a second. I just would like to know, just for the benefit of people watching, uh, what is meant by correcting the status, just so that those people who, who quite, you know, may not quite fully get some of the lingo that we're doing. But Sook, let's go, go to you to start with. Because some of these things, they're a bit detailed for a call like this, to be honest. People have to look at them. I was just going to say this, the Sovereign Trust uh, .net website that I put on earlier, the limited company process on that goes through status correction in the context of completing that process. Right, so in and of itself, it's, I don't see it as just a small piece of a tactic. It has to be used as a wider strategy. So I don't think it's something that you can use as a silver bullet. But it is used as part of the process where we've um, set up and successfully um, secured certain estates and that, that are around the country. So, you, so it does work. There is, but I accept what Dave's saying. But this is about, again, there's lots of different ways of attacking the system. Right, and the, the people got to calm down a little bit when it comes to actually sort of disagreeing with each other. Just state your solution. Don't say the other person's solution doesn't work because that's a nonsense when you do that. Right, at the end of the day, everyone has a different strategy, and the strategies that you have, as long as they are logical, they will defeat the system. Just because Dean and I have a different strategy doesn't mean that we're not taking down the system. We're just doing it in a different way. The corruption has been layered upon layer upon layer over time, and there's lots of holes in it. Right, so we have to think like that. That's why when I say something, I try to correct it. There's always everyone's solutions are valid, but everyone's solutions will also have certain limitations and pitfalls depending on what it's like. Mark Horn, for example, in peacekeepers, if the courts and the judges are open, it's fine. But in a lockdown situation, peacekeepers is completely defunct because there's no yeah. independent judiciary to go to. So peacekeepers is a constitutional solution for long-term prosperity and independence for the futures of the, for the children. It's completely null and void. You know, right. it's great at the current time where you can go into and there's a judge sitting there and you can you come out with all the fact I don't consent. Consent to what? There's no one to consent to. There's me and the creator and that's it. And the peers to judge me if I'm in the wrong. So there's there's lots of different solutions and there's lots of different pitfalls and you have to work out which ones work for you. Correction status has a place. And then for me, the context of that is in the limited company process, which a number of people have used. And that's in a document fully 
uh, fully documented process and everything on the on the website that I passed on to you. Okay, can I just add that the key hang, to hang, what? Hang, can I just on, add David. that the key to what we're doing is the key is self governance. That's the okay. key. Whatever you're doing, if it moves you towards self governance, it's a step in the right direction. Mm. Okay, so let me just. I just want to quickly into into interact here and say this is one of the reasons that it's so good to have all these different people coming because I'm often accused by certain people that by having so many people on the on the channel who are attacking the system from different aspects that I'm confusing people because there's too many and I disagree by saying everybody has their own opinion and their own way of doing things and clearly they're working for them or they're you know mm. they're they're doing mm. the, f for each individual person and i think that's great so it's great to have a debate mm. like this where no one's getting angry and no one's getting cross or calling names but we're just looking at the yeah. uh, the different nuances on how to approach it which i think is fantastic so thank you for all of all of you for being up for a yeah. coming on the show and being able to it's um, a discussion, isn't it? Yeah, absolutely. And, and, and there's I lots of ways, laudable. lots of ways to to win awards. You know, not one size fits all. So it is great. It's healthy. And just looking at some of the comments here, I mean, it's great that you've answered that because yeah, there is a lot of flack sometimes you get. And I think it's great what you're doing in your show is a, is just allowing of this platform for people to come along and and share their views, whether you agree well, with it, them or not. It's, yeah, it's, I mean, yeah. it's not about me, but it, I just wanted to to, to say it, that, that that nobody, you know. I, we're not favouring anybody no, else over no, exactly. anybody else. No, no, no. Um, let's. I mean, I favour if anybody the audience because the they're the ones that, that well, are the Mo most important. Well, Pitt's got a question. Quite, late, quite a straightforward hint here. Let's so, hope so. <laughs> yeah, this is an easy one. Phew. Do deeds for the house exist? Where to obtain? Solicitors don't have have them. The bank, the mortgage company don't have them. Can only get copies from the land registry. So where are your deeds? Yes, because haven't they all been digitised now? Oh, the they probably have. And, and unless so you, yeah, unless away. you got them and put them in your safe years ago. So um, does anybody know anything about the, the deeds of the house and where you can obtain them from? I mean, presumably, if you're still in a mortgage, you can't get your deeds no, till you the paid bank, off. Yeah, yeah, can that, you not? yeah, yeah. I know when sure. when when I got mine, I just got some very. I mean, my house is eight, eight was built in eighteen seventy five, mm. Victorian terrace, two up, two down. Mm. Sometimes there's only one up, two down, <laughs> depending on <laughs> how many's in the house. Well, depending on what's happened to the house. Um, <laughs> But when I got that, it was just um, a crappy bit of paper, really, that said, you know, you, you own the house. Well, you've got the freehold to the house. Um, but when my dad died, his his bungalow was built in something like 1931. And there were reams and really? old maps. And, and it wow. was, you know, a beautiful um, collection yeah. of stuff. And the calligraphy, perhaps, and as well, yeah? the calligraphy. Mm. And it said, X marks the spot. And if you dig here, at, you know... Oh, you'll find the treasure. On a moonlight night with uh, <laughs> take three paces. And, yeah, there's the dead yeah. body uh, and everything. But... Um, but D, yeah. So, but the original deeds, if then they, I mean, until you paid your mortgage off, they will be held held with the with the, uh, with the, the mortgage lender. company. And then, yeah, and then they, they should not... be sent to you. Yeah, they, they should theoretically be sent to you once the mortgage is paid off. I mean, the off. solicitor shouldn't have yeah. them, would they? No, well, unless you ask the solicitor to, to keep them. To keep them. Yeah, after, it's like yeah. buying gold. You know, you can get somebody to look after your gold if you're going to you, buy it. If you've it. got gold, I've got a couple of. Um, would you like me to look after it? No. Oh. Because <laughs> then it's not my gold, is it? No, that's. I very think true. that's the thing. People buy gold and then they they have the wherever they bought it. They yeah. they let them have it, but if it's your gold, you keep it. That's where the trust comes. That's in. where anyway. It, yeah, mark the spot and all that kind of stuff. Um, right. Let's have a look. Any more questions? Um, more. Oh, here you go. Mortgage is Latin for death pledge. I think somebody just thrown that in, and somebody else did say about their professional gambler and you're right Chris well done so they're agreeing with you so it's nice to get positive comments isn't so that's it? maybe that's what we should do we should gamble and what would you... and and bury our gold no no oh. Chris's thing was you gamble and then whoever no wins, yeah, wins no it taxing. you just rent it back from them yeah. assuming that the people who win will rent it back to well, you. Well, there is that. That's, there's and your trust. presumably, Chris, you are at their mercy. If they yeah. suddenly say, oh, we were renting it back to you at five or a month, now, um, you know, we don't like you so much. Yeah, it <laughs> We're is. renting it back at 500 a month. Yeah, well, that, yeah. it's like all contracts. You've got to agree it. Yes. Oh, like I see. A, and trust yes. that person, that good old-fashioned word. And presumably trust you could do that over a long period and say for the next 500 years, it's a pound a month. Yeah. yeah. Why not? Yeah. Or if Why it's not? a trust, 80 years. I think a trust can only last 80 years, can it Is not? Is there a limit to a trust, uh, Chris? 
Uh, well, I'm really thinking of it as a uh, a, a bet. Right. Yes. Yeah, uh, are you it's stretching fingers? Stretching or fingers. <laughs> yeah, no, I'm going to say something, but that, it wasn't on that. I was just waiting to cover something slightly different. No, no, that. sorry, sorry, Sue. The, the show is descending into some. It's my fault. I appreciate that. What What did you want to say? I suppose it's like might be slightly disjointed now, but I just had. I was at the obviously this week we had the first farmers' protest. In, yes. Yeah. And so I was there, and one of the farmers just uh, texted me a question. They said, "I'm not sure it's coming on there." So it was just whether we wanted to uh, have that question aired. Not... Yes, please. Yes, no, absolutely. Yeah, because one of the questions there is that they're asking is what What are the farmers' rights, and how could they be using them to assist in their efforts to save British farming? So. I don't know if people know the background really quickly. The, the protest was around Save British Farming. And obviously a bit like early on with the protest that we had back in 2020, this is their first time out. So they've got the eclectic mix of um, political agents who are paid to do their job and organise rallies uh, for political ends versus the sort of organic people who are there as part of a, a wider awakening to their rights. Mm. I suppose the key the key message here for the for the farmers is that what you really need to be asking for, you're making the effort to make demands for something, then you really need to be demanding your rights rather than specific policy changes. As farmers, you're growing the food and you are completely sovereign and should be left completely independently to live your lives and farm exactly how you see fit as long yeah. as you're getting the, getting the food out. There shouldn't be uh, the legislation that exists at the moment. And the law that we're talking about protects those farmers in alienable rights. Now, the interesting bit here with the controlled opposition is that, on one hand, the group that are saying save British farming, um, their core strategy is to rejoin the EU in a single market. Okay. Oh, right. So people <laughs> uh -uh. Have to you have to understand the incongruence and the, the paradox in being called save British farming and saying it's not political, and then having constant rhetoric, which is orientated around... Uh, anti-Brexit and there's a lady called Liz Webster that set up the Save British Farming and uh, the contradictions are, are shocking to be honest with you in terms of uh, expose so we have to have a look the farmers need to have a look it's your rights that you're talking about it's the yes. inalienable rights that are in the constitution that's what you're demanding and then you can do whatever you need to do on the farm you're free to live there and grow the food however you need to do it and you can sell it to who you want and you can set up your own networks and it'll break you free of the supermarkets. Right? And it's not a short journey. It's something that will take time to get that transition in place. But if you don't know what to demand for, these people are always going to have you demanding two or three. I mean, the three, uh, the three demands they have are actually quite top level. They're talking about they want honest labelling on all food. They want to ban substandard imports. Um, I've gone third one now because I've just gone a bit black, right? And um, oh, sorry, a secure U and uh, secure UK food security, right? Now those three are inherently protected already in the constitution, in the in the common law, and as Dean rightly said, in the true common law, which is which is in the constitution, it goes back right through to even before the the, the Christian elements even landed here, right? So this is this is the way that now, as people start to move into this more intense period of political campaigning it's important that people understand what this panel and everything else that its root core is talking about is inalienable rights mm. those rights which are granted to you because your blood flows and your flesh lives not because you filled out any document or you got a birth certificate or anything the other side of inalienable rights are human rights okay those are granted by a government and can be changed and taken away by a government and the things at the moment that the control people are talking about, so my farmer brothers, they're talking about your human rights. Yes. So you're going to ask for them and then the next government comes mm. and they can take them away. What you yes. have to demand for is your inalienable rights. Okay, so all the people that are out there, the NFU, Save British Farming, Liz Webster, whoever else these people are that are out there, the demands that need to be made of them are that you're fighting for your rights, not pieces of individual policy. Mm. When you... When you... When you say you're demanding them, but you were saying prior to, prior to that, you know, if you're sovereign, you, you're not so much demanding, you're just saying these are. Mm. But why would you, demanding would be asking permission, would it not? 
Yeah, and so that's why I caveat at the beginning, where the farmers are in their journey at the moment is where the rest of us were, but let's just argue and say, say four mm -hmm. years. Right, ago. okay, yeah. Most some of them have been there much longer. So they're going through that process. And part of that process, the forming process of a team, and then the storming, the forming process was they all got together and they wanted to campaign. The storming yeah. aspect of team building is now happening because the controlled agents and those people who maybe haven't thought the issues through completely are now starting to pull on the agenda. And as they yes. start to pull, you'll start to get the little fractions in the teams. As people mm -hmm. start to loyally, there's a loyalty thing, we, you know, so-and-so was working hard, so we back them. It's not about who's nice. It's not mm -hmm. about who's working hard. It's not about who was first on the field and organized the rally. It's mm -hmm. about who has the logical, truthful argument to set you free and secure your rights so that you can farm, fish, you know, do whatever profession it is you want to do free without mm -hmm. the government legislation and without the slavery and then being able to shut you down with lockdowns and everything mm -hmm. else. And but the key thing around that British farming bit is if they've got to start focusing on rights rather than policy. Yes. And because that's the fight that everyone's uh, and asking for. Presume, I mean, the, I saw a video somebody sent me today and they were saying uh, well, one of our demands is that the subsidies should be helping the farmers to to grow stuff. And I just thought, well, if you're taking a subsidy, you're basically signing a contract to mm. do what the government wants rather than mm. if you're not taking a substancy, a, a substancy, a substancy what that is. subsidy. Sure. Um, what, yeah. Whereas if you don't take it, you should be able to do whatever you damn well like within because you're in degree. contract with yeah. them, aren't you? Mm. It's time to go. Well, we've got to remember that not, you know, 99.99% of people are good people stuck in a crop system. Yes. As we go through that, it's difficult. The farmers are in the most difficult position because Theirs is, a, theirs is a critical service. They have to grow the food or we all starve. So whether yes. the policy's changed or not, it's a bit like if they, they can't just go on strike in quite the same way, I suppose, right? If they're being conscientious about it. So we have to get behind that and support. Yeah. We have to help feel yeah. that, right? They've been on, you know, all of the different professions, all the different industries, whether it was the nurses back in 2021, whether it's the farmers now, they're all put, and they, even some of the police, military intelligence, those people who have a conscience, all of them need need the support of the wider public. Yeah. yeah so from the farmer's perspective, though, for everyone to, to be fighting for freedom of choice, which is what the trial by annulment by trial by jury, the ancient laws and customs give you, that freedom of choice to farm how you want, to live how you want, to take whatever medical vaccines you do or don't want, you know, to smoke whatever herbs you do or yeah. don't. Not that I'm being biased in that one. Right, no, and no. whatever it is, right? So they're, they're the freedom, they're the free choices that you have. And the, farmers have, to be, you have, the you... farmers have to be looking for that. And you're right at the moment, they're asking Parliament, what are they doing? They're opening the debate at this stage. The first yeah. wave is about opening the debate and the people that are leading the debate are, con are controlled politicians. They're like ex-Lib Dem and the stuff like that, they're anti-Tory. This is not about Tory or Lib Dem or Labour. Mm. This is bipartisan, mm. it's about feeding the nation. These people yes. need to grow up and, and mm. mature a little bit and mm. understand what it's about instead of this constant nonsense. The other thing is, just for the record, Brexit was the will of the people. What sort mm. of Nazi mentality is it that's out there trying to reverse the will of the people? It's well, again, that was a bit dodgy, isn't it? I mean, with the numbers, what is it, 48 or 49, 51%? 49, 51, that's a yeah. bit odd. It doesn't matter. At the end of the day, that was No, I know, we won. We, we, yeah, we, yeah, the Brexit. But I think it's also what you're talking about is like the word liberty and freedom, isn't it? Because when people say we're fighting for liberty, that means you've been, you've, you've been imprisoned, basically. That's, yeah, that's how I see it, because yeah. you know, you're fighting for it, whereas we are free people. And that's what, that's what I think you're saying with the farmers. They're at that stage that they're, they're fighting for their liberty because they see themselves in contract with the government, whereas really they should be fighting for the freedom, which is the right to be sovereign and, and just do what, we, what you, know, you agree to do when God puts on this planet. And the key seemed to be there for me was the trial by jury, because so much yeah. could be corrected and made better for people. Yeah. If you just brought back trial by jury, because everything can be then fair. sorted out fair. Yeah, fair and, and just. You know, you might make a, a dodgy decision on the first trial because the jury yeah. was perhaps biased in some way, but then you could bring it back and it's yeah. not a fixed thing, is it, with trial by jury? It's no, exactly. continu continually exactly. correcting for the people of the land, as, as I understand it. Yeah, because I, just I, saying I think they should bring back, oh. I think they should bring back trial by combat. Trial by combat. Those are the, the strongest wins. Oh, well. well. Uh, yes. Is that coming from a peacekeeper there? Yeah, there we Allegedly, go. Dave. Uh, Dave. Uh, was it Dave? Who, who was that? That came People's in? Lawyer. Oh, Chris. 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 
Yeah, very briefly, I think uh, one thing that can help this process is to help the farmers set up a corporate taxation trust and stop paying taxes until the government meets their conditions. And the key issue is to put in the key conditions that have to be met before any taxation is passed over. And uh, quite honestly, if they put that carefully, then there will never be an opportunity for the government to come back at them. I don't think farmers should be, especially at this day and age, with the threat from the WHO and uh, WF rather, and their sort of policy to make us eat worms. I don't think the farmers should be paying tax at all. They should be concentrating every bit of money into providing good quality, local, mixed farming for everybody. Organic. And that's the way of doing it, really, yeah, Richard. That's exactly what we're suggesting, is um, make sure that you have a lawful way of doing this right now, under the current system that moves us into a new system rather quickly. It's difficult, though, isn't it? Because the farmers have been given so many grants, you know, to 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 turn their barns into holiday cottages or shops. Grow flowers. Like that. That's the grow thing. flowers or monocrops or whatever. So they've been encouraged yep. to do that rather than grow food. Yeah, but they've, and, they've, the industries, but they've they've destroyed the margins in the industry. They've completely yeah. changed farming is by its very natural architecture is an abundance based economy. And these, these corrupt people have turned it into a scarcity-based economy. You know how many yes. seeds mm. one tomato plant gives you? How can you not have millions and millions more food each year when you look at the, how seed multiplies? Yes. Right? How much effort is taking for them to, to force scarcity into food when yes. it's just simply was never, it was never grown, it was never you know, evolved in that way? So, yeah, I, the, the farmers, first of all, when the people go, oh, well, they spray this, that, and the other. That's the way that those revolutions have gone, the Industrial Revolution, Punjab's Green Revolution. Well, obviously, farming for me is close to the heart because we consider ourselves farmers in 1469 at least. So, you know, that that's why it's an, it's important that they are set free, yeah. right? Because they are the custodians of the land. And now the farmers have had to stand up. The land is essentially standing up now. Mm. We're at that final phase of this. We've had the health and all the rest of it. But at <laughs> this stage, every revolution in history has been run and won when the farmers have stood up. Mm. So listen, um, we've only got a few more minutes left. Is there um, some quick fire questions yeah, that one. we can get yes or no sort of questions yeah. before well, we can, go? Can, yes. Yeah, moving away from farming, although it's really interesting, but there are other questions here. Can we elaborate about the alloidal title for property? That's not a yes or no. That's oh, a... oh, 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 sorry. But well, right. you can. Go. You can say no, no. yes or no. No, no, go on. So read, read the question again. <laughs> can you elaborate? Yes or no? On what? <laughs> on the Lloyd, a Lloydal title for property. Yes. I think, I think Jules mentioned it. D Dean. Dean's waving. Dean. I hope that's waving. <laughs> uh, yeah. So can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. you you're very much now in the dark. <laughs> right. So if. If 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 a, if a word or a sentence has got the word title in it, it means somebody's giving it to you. Okay. Right. So, in their system, allodial is what you might call the highest position of title ownership. But with that, it means that you have got to defend it yourself. So I wouldn't really recommend it. If an invading army came in, oh. you'd have to get your uh, you know, shovels and pitchforks out and uh, defend it yourself. The next one down is called the uh, fee simple. So fee, F W E simple. So that's like second down on the ladder. So with every drop in the ladder, you lo lose a certain amount of rights. And the one below fee simple is what most people have today. It's called freehold. So free, F R W E hold. Most people have got that on their property. So they're just the two levels. There's more, there's tenancy and, and all those things below. But they're the sort of three main levels for anybody uh, who is not aware of it. So, Dean, um, th thanks for that. But uh, people are often saying, oh, but we've only got the freehold. That means that we can be kicked off the land if the king or the Correct. crown. Yeah. It's... Right. Well, that's but, that's that's that, thanks very much. There and we it's are. allodial, not alloidal, I take it. Allodial. Yes, is it allodial. allodial? Allodial or alloidal? All. A double L O D I A L. Allodial. Allodial. There was another sort of quickie here. I've got to say it because it's from Mark. And it says, with the car situation, 
can Mark buy the car from Mark, then send a letter stating the vehicle was sold? So can Mark sell it to Mark, basically? Okay, so I've done that, and I oh. got myself into a slight pickle, is that when, when I did all that, what this Mark is saying, uh, but when the cops robbed the property off me, meaning the car, and it was then impounded, the people who had robbed the car asked me to provide ID to go and get the vehicle. And obviously the only ID that I could provide was the receipt, but I couldn't provide any other official ID because I'd sold it to a fiction that didn't exist. Right. And so therefore mm. you lost the car. Therefore I couldn't go and claim the car. I had no witnesses oh, right. that would be witness for me. So Basically, they had they won that round. They had that. Not so good. Right. Okay, so that's, well, yeah, that's, that the, uh, yeah, so that's a good answer. Any other quick uh, um, quick fire questions? The, what was it? The farmers are obeying corporations because they aren't sovereign themselves. There you go. Here's a quickie from Stuart. It says, is there a difference between being born at home to being born in hospital? Yes. One's in a, one's in a hospital. Building, one's, in one's in a house. You were born alive. <laughs> were you born alive? Well, if we're still living, yeah. yes. <laughs> Okay, well, the word alive means you're actually dead because they put the word A in front of live, which negates the oh, word live. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, my God. He's very clever, Dean, he is, isn't he? He's, very he's, clever. he's, he's been, been doing it yeah. for a while. He, he is, yeah. He picked up the But book. the fact whether you're in a hospital or a home, it doesn't matter. It's it's, it's whether you're alive. Live or alive. Well, you so, might use the living. But, but in, a, in hospital, uh, that's when you're going to get most of the coercion. Yeah, yeah, you, yeah, yeah. Um, you're in the you're system. Home. You're in the system. But the coercion comes afterwards. But uh, when it comes afterwards, then you're in a better position to rebuff, you know, rebuff it. Yeah. yeah, we had just for the record, we had two children uh, born at home in this very house. In fact, my daughter, I think it was, was born in this room, more or less, where we're sitting now, some thirty years ago. And yeah. I can tell you that uh, having two kids born at home is the most relaxing experience. <laughs> Um, not just for the husband, because I was oh, making yes, egg course. on toast for the yes. midwife. But you don't have, as oh, Dave yeah, is saying, you don't get all the crap of, you know, you, we've got to go and weigh the baby now, we've got to go and cut the cord yeah. now, we've got to do this, and having all those people next door screaming. And needles in the feet as soon uh, as they come out. Yeah, we, I mean, okay? Bush, we, we were much more relaxed. And as a result of that, none of my children talked to me. So um, <laughs> moving on. <laughs> No, they um, do. They do reluctantly because I'm a conspiracy <laughs> nut. That's the thing. Here's a quickie-ish. Yes. Um, years ago, I claimed. Oh, it's moving. A business registration and ownership certificate for fictitious name. How do I use it? Well, that maybe not such a quickie. We've got seven minutes. Seven minutes. Years ago, I claimed a business registration and ownership certificate for fictitious name. How do I use it? Why would you? Why would you use it for a fictitious name? Mm. Oh, would, anyway, how does yeah. it? Does, did does anyone he mean understand? The, the fictitious name? Does he mean the fictitious name? Oh, in name? the fictitious name. As um, in, well, yeah, I guess. The... Ownership certificate well, for... Fi I guess it's a the. I think he just... Kimmy. Kimmy's put that in. Well, if oh, arguably, if you're using your only name and it's an all-caps name or a capitalised first and letter name or Mr or any other title, it's a fictitious name anyway. So if you, if you haven't understood that, it's probably not much point in going further down that road. Right. OK, that's a quickie. Thank you. Um, what about this one? Has anyone accessed that? Oh, it keeps coming up this, every year, and I can't say that word. Sesqui... Sesqui yeah, yeah. So has anyone accessed the, the <laughs> Keska Cave? Keska yeah. Whatever it is. Yeah. Um, it's, 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 oh, Julia's accept. saying it. This is the bankers have accessed it, so don't worry about it. That's your trust, is it? That's kind of your, your strawman's <laughs> trust sort of thing, yeah? Yeah. So just leave that one alone then. Um... And Suka's putting his thumbs up. There we go. The bank's got yeah, the money. <laughs> Uh, okay. Excellent. Any more questions? How can how can we get the younger generation in this movement? Oh my God, there's a question. There's a question. It's not really a lawful question. No, it? how it's, can it's we not. Get them we're, in there? we're doing our best, aren't we? We're we're all out there, sort of. Get I them, guess. Though. Yeah. I guess teach the parents and get the parents to teach your children. I mean, that's that's all that can be done. And really. get them off the screens. Yeah. Get them off the screens. Yeah. I think that's really important. Yeah. Give them something else to do. 
because I was over at Hope Sussex last week and we were talking about this, all the youngsters, I'm surprised they're not going to be born with screens in their hands, but you've got to give them something else to do, to be out in nature, to, you know, to maybe do something more adventurous or do comedy, stand-up, so just get other interests in them. Go on, yeah. Well, actually, it's the other way around. Um, Is it? My, yeah, my son was an Xbox addict and... Um, you know, he, he would, every moment, spare moment every day, he'd be on it. Um, and then one day it broke and he was, uh, you know, he couldn't repair it and I refused to get him a new one. And um, and what happened, he went through uh, about two or three weeks of withdrawal symptoms. And then all of a sudden, he discovered he had an interest in music and, you know, taught himself how to play keyboards. And within a month, he had an album out on iTunes. He discovered who he was. Right, as soon as he got away from that, that box. Mm. Huh. So there we go. Take a hammer. Take a hammer. <laughs> yeah, arrange an accident. <laughs> arrange an accident. But it's creativity. The bailiffs it? have come and they've acted. We had to give oh, them no. something. We had to give them something. So we got, gave them your Xbox. That's the answer there. But, Sorted. But can I, the thing that allegedly Dave just said is about creativity. It might be another screen, but I think it is about creativity because that's what they've tried to wipe out from us. And even in the, in the education system, it's about creating and being in nature and doing stuff like I that. Think, I think, you know, that thing about parents, if the parents are good examples of things, not forcing anything but if you're creative as a parent and you're doing something there's something about the link yeah. where you go my dad just made that or he made that I don't know how he did it it's a piece of crap but actually I wouldn't mind having a go yeah you know but because if they don't if they're not subjected to anybody doing something creative or, or interesting yeah. then, that's right then it's, how would they know that's right it's, 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 it's learning this guy is really do, going I did do a homeschool uh, course for um, you know for, for children on, on yeah. common law and what I found was the, the, the children lapped it up. You know, once they, yeah. once they learned that, uh, for instance, answering a question of a question, it became an amazing game for them. And they were out, out in the garden Fantastic. sort of, you know, playing the game. Yeah. A nightmare for the parents, I imagine. The <laughs> it was, <laughs> actually. Like, you know, we can't I think you should go to bed. Well, you yard. might think I should go to bed, but I don't think it's time for and, and Am I obliged the... to go to bed? You know? Yes, exactly. <laughs> yes. Why should I go Where to bed? Where did I agree to that? Can I have the wet signature on this? <laughs> Where is my bed? Oh, God. But I think be... the people's lawyer is doing a lot for education. He is he certainly. He's had, unfortunately, I think um, he's David, had to go. He David had to, uh, to leave. Said, Ladies and gentlemen, we have actually come to the end of the show. Oh, mm. um, it's been a very entertaining and engaging show, and I hope I haven't marred it with some of my humour. <laughs> uh, what I call humour, you may not call it humour, but I don't care. Um, that's my show. So thank you very much to the panel very very kind of you to come in we've got a couple more of these but you're a bit dubious about well yeah next, next week. i don't know whether i can come next week but i'm sure you can go without me It'd probably be much better without me but we do have peter wilson and Callie spell that are coming on carly spell they're, they're coming on next week and maybe anybody else that would like to so um yeah so but they're fresh faces and then um, we've got more people on the on the 12th as well opportunity nuts opportunity and i mean nuts. that most sincerely yes. folks yes. um so, yeah, big thank you to Jill, who came and told us her happy story, which was fantastic, uh, to allegedly Dave, to Dean from Buxton. Uh, by the way, there's a video, wonderful video of uh, Dean, Julia and I going up to Solomon's Temple, is it, or Tower? Or I'm still... I Temple, I said, I yes, I right. watched that. It was very good. On the good. channel. Yeah, um, in the Peak District. Up there in the Peak District, which we were in. Mm. Uh, to Pete the Hat, to Chris Coverdale, and, of course, to Souk. Have I m missed anybody? David Edelman, who has actually disappeared, uh, the people's lawyer who had to go early. Mm. And, of course, to Karen for coming in sure. and facilitating all mm. of the stuff. And Julia, who is in the background just checking and yeah. making sure that, that we have no detractors yes. or no Naughty tractors. People. No, we need tractors, of course. <laughs> um, and uh, I'd just like to say thank you so much for everybody supporting the channel to you with your questions, which is absolutely vital. Really appreciate that. Um, Roadshows, reminder. Roadshow. Apparently there's some roadshows. I need to go and check those dates to see if I'm free. But yes, it would be good if you're there. In essence, yeah. I'm happy to come along and... Um, yeah, and I, facilitate. I mean, I, yes, I haven't got yeah. buttons to press. No, no, but you'll just be there. You can, do, you can do your suitcase or your, you know, you can do your... your <laughs> quarry, yeah, all that sort of stuff. <laughs> anyway, um, it's been absolutely wonderful. Thanks to everybody uh, for coming on and another show. Um, we'll be back, not Thursday as it is tonight i hope you have a fantastic easter by yes. the way if you're having one um 
But we'll be back next Friday, whatever Friday date fifth. that is. Yeah, there the we fifth, are. The um, so thank you very much to everybody. Thank Look you. after yourselves. Take care. Until yeah. next time, from all of us, till next time, uh, looking for the button to turn this thing <laughs> off. <laughs> we just keep oh. waving. Bye-bye. Yeah. Time to go home.